Hey everybody, welcome back to Gabriel Knight, Sins of the Fathers. The updated version of it. Okay, we just got a short comment from some guy. I'm guessing the updated the graphics doesn't look too bad for point and click. Yeah, they updated the graphics. They uh, basically turned this into a Windows executable. Because um, back in the day it was all hand-drawn art. And well, it still is, but it's, you know, high res now instead of, you know, what it was back in the 90s. Uh, it supports native resolutions, like right now this is running at 1080, I mean natively, so you know, that's good because it looks a whole hell of a lot better. Uh, basically, yeah, it's pretty much the same game, just improved. Okay, load game, day two. Now I've got to get in the habit of making like multiple saves and saving pretty often because uh, I did a little bit of reading and there is one spot in like towards the final chapter of the game where you can completely fuck yourself. But it's like the only spot there is. And of course there's ways to die too in this apparently, but they're somewhat rare. I'm not anywhere near that. But anyway, thanks for your comment and let's get back into this while we wait for the load to occur. Okay. All right, sugar tits, let's see what you got to say. Don't mind if I do. Do what? Oh, nothing. Got a minute, Grace? What's up? Yeah, these are 3D models. They're not uh, the sprites they used to be. Do you have messages for me? Dana called and Susie left a message about a lawsuit. Tossum. Okie dokie. Well, that's all the messages for now. Wow. Times dated June 19, 1993. A front page article describes the most recent of the voodoo murders. Gabriel scans it but learns nothing new. The article reiterates that the voodoo aspect of the crime is faked. Gabriel shivers. It looked real enough to him. Elsewhere, there's an article about the history of Jackson Square called the Plaza Dams under French rule. It was used for executions, firing squads, hangings, even impalement and breaking on the wheel. Yikes! Of course, these days, it's mostly a hangout for tourists, street musicians, and local artists. Gabriel also scans the Aquarius horoscope for the day. Chances of a dark star rising on this day. Do not trust your instincts. I feel a dark star rising all right. Rawr. Yeah, she's not into it, homie. Sorry. I think the only way you would have any chance with that is if you gave her a Ruffy Colada. Not that I meant, uh, recommend that, but let's be real here. This chick ain't gonna do anything for uh, Gabriel. At least, not in this game. I don't know about Gabriel Knights 2 or 3. Okay. I'm out of here. Try not to sell out the store while I'm gone. Uh-huh. Welcome, my friend. Hello. I am the proprietor, Dr. John. If you have any questions, I will be happy to assist. Great. My name is Knight. And I'll probably take you up on that. A street drummer has settled outside the museum. Gabriel can't do anything with the drummer on the street. The 
voodoo shrine is filled with items that both fascinate Gabriel and also make his skin crawl. Yeah, and these little art things here have been updated too, because they didn't look this good back in the day. This coffin is so small. Wonder who that poor bastard was. Will that look sacrilegious? They lend a certain psychotic ambiance, no? Magenta Moonbeam. Voodoo Inn. A flyer advertising Magenta Moonbeam. A local Voodoo Inn. Her parlor is on the corner of Orleans and Dauphine. A waste of some perfectly good wine, if you ask me. It wouldn't be much of a voodoo museum without a voodoo doll. Okay, well there's that. Flickering candles lend an appropriately spooky atmosphere to the museum. Reminds me of a book critic for the New York Times. Reminds me of a no, book critic. No, I don't want to do that. I do this. Looks like Jack Nicholson. An official voodoo wishing stump. Rub it and make a wish, a card says. Funny, I say the same thing to women. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure he rubs it and makes a wish often. I wish Molly Getty were mine forever. Really, I mean it. What was that? Huh? Nothing. Good God. The thirst is real. An authentic looking pole marks the center of the room. Authentic what? Gabriel isn't sure. The pole is solidly connected to the floor. Give me some time and hello. A leather whip hangs from a peg on the wall. Oh, hurt me. I knew there was going to be something like that. Fucking knew it. It's an electrical switch. What does this do? Turn that thing off. Oh, sorry. We have air conditioning, you see. Yeah, I see. Okay, you got air conditioning. All right, fair enough. So why is there a fan open to the outside when you have AC? Why wouldn't this be sealed off or blocked off with something? Because if you've got an open vent outside, that's just pumping all the cool air out. There's a beaten up old fan in the window. It's silent at the moment. The fan might operate, but not in that way. Okay. The fan is entrenched in the window frame. The fan is entrenched in the window frame. Gabriel has no interest in the noisy fan at the moment. Okay, so that might be, like, later. The back wall displays various voodoo items, such as... Offerings of fruits to the voodoo deities. Something about the shape of that knife gives Gabriel the creeps. Yeah, right. I'd probably cut my own head off with that thing. Gabriel doesn't want anything to do with that knife. Okay, so then why put it on the fucking wall? That must be Marie Laveau. Gabriel doesn't recognize the museum's flags. A very large, very formidable looking snake is secured in a plexiglass cage. The python is quite dangerous. I would stay back if I were you. Thanks for the advice. You might remember uh, one of the nightmare elements is a snake strangling, I guess, Gabriel's ancestor or former life or whatever to death. The snake is too far away. Yeah, I don't give a shit about the snake, really. 
Dr. John is a huge man. If his manner weren't so pleasant, he'd be intimidating. Given the man's size, that doesn't seem advisable. I probably should say before I experiment. I know I've got a little while Can before I, ask you a few I possibly questions? die. That is why I am here. What do you know about the voodoo murders? The killings in the newspaper. I know they have nothing to do with true voodoo in New Orleans. That's what every voodoo practitioner says, though. Anytime there's any kind of murder going around, they say, that's not real voodoo. But, you know, kind of makes you wonder. Not that I would know. I'm just an ignorant white guy. What do you think of New Orleans? It is the only city in the United States, as far as I am concerned. Well, you kind of got that one wrong there, pal. Do you know anything about snakes? Ah. You have perhaps noticed the museum snake, Mr. Knight? They are beautiful creatures. Do you not agree? And the tourists seem to associate them with voodoo. Tell me about yourself. Me? Yes, if you don't mind. What is it you wish to learn? Why did you open a voodoo museum? The subject has fascinated me all my life. And I wanted to help preserve the cultural heritage it represents. What kind of background in voodoo do you have? Let us just say I cut my teeth on it, Mr. Knight. It is in my blood. Do you do anything besides run the museum? No. The museum does not make me a rich man, but my material needs are simple. I prefer to focus on my one true interest in life. What are your own religious beliefs? My beliefs are too personal and too complex to discuss with a layman, Mr. Knight. Just tell me anything. I am originally from the West Indies myself, you know. Really? What brought you to New Orleans? I was drawn here for personal reasons. Just tell me anything. I am a vegetarian. Really? I can't imagine living without meat. That must be the hunter in you, Mr. Knight. Just tell me anything. I am not an easy person to get to know. I am a very private man. Isn't that unusual for someone in the museum business? Not at all. My displays speak for me. Just tell me anything. Not everyone can come see the museum, so I occasionally do public speaking on the subject of historical voodoo. Anything coming up that I might attend? No. But then you have me all to yourself right now, do you not? Actually, I can't think of a thing. Then let us discuss something else. So how is the museum business? Those who truly seek to understand are few, Mr. Knight. But even one can be an audience. Sounds about like my shop. What can you tell me about voodoo? Historical voodoo? Or the voodoo currently practiced in the city? Tell me about historical voodoo. Very well. I will start at the beginning, Mr. Knight and will go on from there at your prompting. Sounds good. As you may know, voodoo is a grassroots religion formed by the mixing together of many different African tribal religions and Anglo religions, such as Catholicism or Protestantism. In other words, it is a religion born of the African slave trade, but African slaves were imported not only by the United States, but also into the West Indies with the French and Spanish-ran plantation islands. Prior to 1803, the New Orleans area was owned by France. The French Creole in those days owned many African slaves. But the Creole did not permit their slaves to gather, giving no chance for voodoo to breed here natively. The Creole also knew enough about the corrupted pagan practices of the West Indies slaves to ban the importings of slaves from that region. 
Okay, we're almost out of stuff to talk to this guy about, which is good. Tell me about current voodoo. Many people think of voodoo in terms of magic spells or gri-gri. That kind of practice is actually called hoodoo and is only a part of true voodoo. Voodoo, the religion, has a strong following in New Orleans. In fact, it is growing quite rapidly. There are several voodoo churches or temples in the city, and others all across the United States. African Americans see it as a tradition all their own. Whites, and there are many in the religion, are attracted to it because they think it is exotic. I personally am more interested in the history of voodoo. Some of the new movements are copying Haitian or even African voodoo. But it is the voodoo of New Orleans that I find so intriguing. So how did voodoo come to New Orleans? After the Louisiana Purchase, American legislators relaxed regulations. Slaves were permitted to gather. The Americans also removed the ban on West Indies slaves. Around the same time, a slave revolt occurred in Santo Domingo, what is now Haiti. Between the lifting of the ban and the Haitian revolt, West Indies slaves began pouring into New Orleans. Some of them were free people of color, freed or escaped slaves. Some came with their white owners who were fleeing from the revolt. Nope, not more. Okay. And what happened when the West Indies slaves got here? They brought voodoo with them. The native slaves were more than enthusiastic about embracing it. It gave them power, Mr. Knight. If only in the form of a communal barn. Among the first meeting places were the Bayou St. John and the shore of Link Pontchartrain. The early voodoos were heavy snake worshippers, worshipping the one they call the Great Zombie. Tell me more about historical voodoo. By 1817, the voodoo activities were beginning to cause fear among the white slave owners. An ordinance was passed to forbid slave gatherings except in designated public areas at designated times. The time was Sunday afternoons at the place Congo Square. The slaves and free people of color gathered to dance simulations of their voodoo dances right in sight of Creole society. Of course, they also continue to meet in private for the real thing. Getting a little bit of a hint there. Tell me more about historical voodoo. There were a variety of kings and queens at first, voodoo priests and priestesses. But from about 1830, a single power emerged. This was a voodoo queen named Marie Laveau. Marie Laveau ruled voodoo in New Orleans for many years. That's what I needed. Tell me about Marie Laveau. There were actually two Marie Laveaux, mother and daughter. Most people thought they were the same woman. Her continued youth added to the mystique. The original, the mother, was also known as Widow Paris. It was she that began the empire. Tell me more about Marie Laveau. The Laveau tomb, where one or both of the Maries are believed to be buried, is in St. Louis Cemetery No. 1. It is a popular shrine for practitioners and tourists alike. I myself take tours through the cemetery on a regular basis. Really? Do you have any run-in this week? No, but the cemetery is open to the general public as well. What exactly is hoodoo? Hoodoo refers to magic folk traditions of the South. Hoodoo is a bastard of voodoo. Many of the Gri Gri are similar, but hoodoo does not have the religious aspects of voodoo. So where do you pick up all this stuff? Oh, here and there. We accept donations of any pertinent items. Do you ever get any wackos in here? You mean, besides yourself? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, besides me. I do not care to make those kinds of judgments, Mr. Knight. All are welcome here. You're a big guy, aren't you? You work out, play sports? 
I do not play basketball. If that is what you want to know. Who, me? No, you just look like such a natural athlete. I do find ways of keeping fit, Mr. Knight. After all, our bodies are temples. You sound like Grace. I should get the two of you together. Is Grace your wife? No, she just acts like it. <laughs> okay, that was a good one. So what do you think of our summer weather? Have you ever seen it so overcast or so muggy? It is unpleasant. The heavens are not pleased these days. Nice outfit. I prefer simple cotton to dead flesh, Mr. Knight. I'll have to remember that. This is quite a place you have here. Thank you, Mr. Knight. I have dedicated myself to the preservation of this unique culture. It is gratifying to see others reap the fruits I have sown. Okay, good. We're out of stuff. All right, let's get out of here. Goodbye, Dr. John. Goodbye, Mr. Knight. Okay, uh... A sign on the front door of Magenta's home reads... Attuning with the spirit realm, back on June 22nd. Okay, now, yes, before we do anything, get in the habit. An old man tends a cemetery with movements akin to a slow draw. Hello there. Got a sec? Go ahead. These folks ain't in no hood. What can you tell me about voodoo? They say it was part of an old religion from Africa, brought here by slaves. What do you know about the voodoo murders? Isn't it just awful? Them finding old bodies with the voodoo things around them? I don't think there's any real voodoo going on. Somebody trying to cover their tracks is all. That VA sounds kind of familiar. What can you tell me about Narlins? Seem like everyone wants to visit Narlins at least once in their lives. And they love the cemetery tours. I see tourists in here every day of the year. Do you know anything about snakes? Snakes? I see snakes around here all the time. Most of them aren't poisonous, of course. I don't mind snakes myself, but lots of folks are afraid of them. Tell me about yourself. My name is Toussaint Gervais. I'm the watchman here at St. Louis Number 1. What exactly do you do here? Oh, I keep the place tidy, of course. But a big part of my job, too, is looking out for the grievers, you know. People come to pay their respects, and they need looking out for them. Sometimes they so grief-bound, they don't know what they're doing. Tell me about yourself. That's about all there is to say. Tell me something about St. Louis Cemetery, number one. You know why the dead are buried in tombs and not in the ground, don't you? The water table's too high. Them coffins will float right out of their graves. Ha! Them dead will go floating right down into the corner. Of course, if it were Mardi Gras, nobody would even notice. It's a historical place. People buried in here from the Civil War. Back further, too. Take a look around. You'll see. You been working here a long time? Longer than you've been alive, son. I may helps be here longer than you'll be alive, for that matter. <laughs> that would be a hint, I think. Kind of a quiet job you've got, isn't it? Most of the time, yeah. They act up some at the full moon, though. You must enjoy the company of dead folks. Unlike the living, they ain't never given me no reason to dislike them none. How's business today? About like every day. It's what you call a seller's market. Okay. Do you know anything about Marie Laveau? Sure, sure. She was the voodoo queen of New Orleans, a powerful voodoo yen, and a powerful sorceress. 
Believers still come to a tomb, you know. They write secret marks on the walls, leave offerings. Then there's the tourists. They come out of curiosity. As a matter of fact, that big Dr. John fella from that voodoo museum, he's here at least once a day. But Marie Laveau's tomb isn't the only one the believers visit and make markings and leave offerings at. You said there were other marked tombs? Yep. I've seen bull hearts left on tombs in a nest of vulture feathers, pleats of peas and congree. Animal parts, human parts even, it looked like. Male parts, if you get my meaning. And this is one of the great family crypts, mind you. Odd how them types just pick a spot and stick to it. Okay, nice little hint. Okay, well, we're done with him. This is the tomb of Marie Laveau, voodoo queen of Narlands. The tomb is securely closed. I want the tea her corpse, so. A plaque on the tomb reads, Laveau. A plaque on the... Mosley and I used to switch street signs, but this is really sick. <laughs> Okay, well that's all there is to it. Yeah, that's all I can do. Okay. Odd looking marks adorn the Laveau tomb wall. The wall doesn't work that way. Yeah, I can't talk to the The marks wall. are reddish in color and remind Gabriel of crosses. They look like they've been here a few days at least. Gabriel can't take the marks with him that way. Okay, well. Oops, uh, no. Okay. Uh. I want a copy of these strange marks. Gabriel can't put his sketch back on the wall. The marks are reddish in color and rem Okay, I guess that's it for the markings. Okay, what we got? Food, trinkets, and more unsettling things have been left at Marie Laveau's tomb. As offerings from believers. No thanks. New Orleans is famous for its above ground tombs. The high water table prevents bodies from being interred underground. Vases seem to be a favorite decoration for the dead. These would seriously clash with my decorating scheme. Here and there in the cemetery, straggly plants grow in stone planters. Near the Laveau tomb is a piece of red brick, undoubtedly a cast off from spiritual graffiti writers. Two heavy, solid marble doors provide an entrance to the tomb.
the tomb door is securely shut against the material world. An angel draped dramatically over a stone plinth marks the entrance to a large tomb. A stone angel leans down to gaze at something unseen. There's a small marble plate near the tomb doors. It's locked shut. Okay. I don't need to go visit the family tomb today. Ah, oh, fuck. Yeah, that was something to do with Adobe Acrobat. I don't fucking know. Acrobat Reader decided to be a bitch. Does this mean anything to you? Sure. I see them marks all the time on the tombs. Don't know what they mean, though. That was illuminating. Some guy. <laughs> Your favorite Bonjour, thing. Monsieur Walker. Bienvenue, Madame Cazonon. Comment ça va? How you be feeling today? Well, I'll tell you, Mr. Walker. I'm certain someone's buried a sleep knot bag somewhere near my steps. I haven't slept a wink, not in weeks. Now, don't that beat all? Gonna need some easy night candles then, huh? Do you think that would help? I do hope you're right. I said three rosaries this morning for our lady's intervention. Rosary good, sure enough, but you buying them candles too, boy? You gonna whip any no sleep gree gree, I tell you for sure. Very well, Mr. Walker. Put them on my account and send them around to my house. Oh, and there's another thing. I didn't catch her at it, but I know. Mrs. Lefebvre put stomachache powder in my tea at the last meeting of the Creole Grand Dame. I've been in misery. Now you put nine pinheads up in the little box. <laughs> Add a pinch of graveyard dust. Put it up under her front post step. That'll turn the trick back on Miss Lafeva, and she be the one with the belly ache. <laughs> I got the pins of dust right here if you want them. If the Blessed Virgin will grant me her protection, I'll be safe from these practitioners of evil. We, oui, madame, though, uh. <laughs> Don't hate to be proactive, uh, neither now, does it? Fucking grifter. Natural, mon messieurs. Merci beaucoup. Mais non, madame. It's not there. Au revoir. Au revoir, monsieur Walker. Someone was just for some guy right there. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> the proprietor doesn't look especially friendly. His business probably doesn't depend on walk-ins. Hi there. Is this your store? This is the Dixieland Drug Store. And I own it. Me. Name's Walker. Willie Walker. Can you tell me what you know about voodoo? This is a novelty shop, monsieur. Do you think I'm stupid? This is a voodoo shop. Look at all this stuff. These is novelties, uh, curiosities. If people want to think they magic, <laughs> it's not my concern, you know. Are you telling me that you own a voodoo shop, but you know nothing about voodoo practices? What does that mean? It means you should mind your own business. What, sure. Klingon? <laughs> what do you think of New Orleans? I live here all my life, me. Oh, shit. What do you think of New Orleans? 
If you're not from around here, monsieur, you should sign up for some tours. Do you know anything about snakes? What kind of snakes? Uh, the kind they use in voodoo? Pythons, boas, so I've heard. Really? Do you have one? Are you crazy? What would I want with a python? What do you know about Marie Laveau? Marie? She's somebody from the old days. One of them old folk tales. The tourists eat it up, no? Tell me about yourself. My name's Willie Walker. I own the place. How did you get into this kind of business? Now, why should I discuss my business with you, man? So, this is a voodoo store, huh? Voodoo? No, man. This is a curio shop. The things you see here from local folklore, none of it real, I tell you for sure. What about all these magic oils and powders you're selling? Aren't they a part of voodoo? Read the label, man. We make no claims. Sold as curio only. It mean what it say, no? These are novelties, not voodoo. So, do you get many tourists in here? We, oui, all the time. They want to buy a bottle of money-drawn oil or wang a bag to take home with them. How's business? Mm, about like always. I'm a businessman, too. I own a bookstore here in the quarter. I don't really care, me. I got a store to run. Have you always lived in New Orleans? My papa and his papa and his papa all the way back to the days of Marie Laveau we've been living here. So, does any of this stuff actually work? You crazy, man. These are just curios. Novelties for the tourists. Nice weather we're having. Don't bother me. Can't you see I'm busy? St. John Eve coming. I got to be ready. You guessing at the hint? What do you know about the voodoo murders? Caprizonco. What did you say? Nothing. Them killings have nothing to do with my shop, monsieur. That customer of yours, the little old lady. Customer? The woman I saw in here, Madame Casino, you called her. I don't talk about my customers to men who come in off the street. What did you mean when you said Cabri Sanco? I didn't say that. You did. I heard you say it. You heard wrong, monsieur. I said no such thing. Okay. The sign says, Special St. John's Eve Lagnia. Free bottle of lover come back to me oil or master gambling oil with every purchase over $50. Lagnia. My French is lousy, but everyone in New Orleans knows what that means. A little something extra. The signs... Uh, no, La not here. Okay, that's all. What would Gabriel do with that sign? Hit this motherfucker with it. The Dixieland drugstore has a rather terrifying way of dealing with shoplifters. Well, okay, I'd like an explanation on that. Hi, John. What the hell's the Hi, John? The entire shelf is stocked with containers of Hi, John the Conqueror root powder. I don't know what that stuff does, but I don't like the sound of it. I do. I want some. <laughs> I don't know what it does, but fuck it. Dried herbs hang from the ceiling. Those are gris gris. They full of magic. No guarantee, though. You know? No, thanks. I don't even want to think about what might be in them. Anything else? I think that's pretty much it here.
The Garden District is famous for its elaborate old plantation homes and mansions. This particular mansion is impeccably groomed. This is private property. Gabriel should stay near the front door till invited to do otherwise. Private property. I'm just gonna barge right the fuck in. No, he's gonna knock. I'll be damned. May I help you? The man looks intellectual, polished, and impervious. He gazes at Gabriel with a superior eye. Gabriel wonders if he's Malia's secretary, bodyguard, butler, or something more personal. <laughs> okay. I'd like to see Malia Giri, please. I'm sorry, but unless you have an appointment or official business, I cannot announce you. I do have official business. Really? Please tell me the nature of your business. Please let me in. No. Go away before I call the police. <laughs> I can't come up with anything there. There's options, but none of them were any good. Potted roses marked the entrance to the house. Gabriel didn't come here to mess with the plants. Okay, well, I guess I don't need a rose or anything. Let's go. Got a second, officer? What can I do you for? What do you know about St. John's Eve? A bunch of crazies out there on St. John's Eve, that's what. We're busy all night. Really? What kind of crazies? Oh, your usual howl at the mooners, I guess. They don't look no weirder than them that come in during Mardi Gras. Never can tell, though. Do you know what Capri San Cal means? No. Sounds foreign or something. Yeah. What can you tell me about snakes? What does this look like? A zoo? Never mind, don't answer that. No. I don't know nothing about no snakes. What do you know about Marie Laveau? Marie who? Is she the one that hangs out on Conti and Nash? Uh, no. Never mind. I'm here to see Detective Mosley. He's in his office. Go on back. She's not bad. Probably wouldn't cooperate. But I wouldn't mind trying. Excuse me, officer? Yes? You know, that uniform looks great on you. Uh-huh. Is that a compliment, or are you asking to borrow my dress? <laughs> it's a compliment. Well, you just never know around here. Thanks, but I'm married. Could you get me some coffee? Are you speaking to me? <laughs> Why, yes. Wow, Deja, leave it to Beaver. I'm the police photographer, sir. You might be able to find someone around here dumb enough to get coffee for you, but it won't be me. Oh, thanks anyway. I can give you precise instructions for the handling of hot liquids if you need them. N no thanks. So, 
What's it like being a policewoman? The glamour never ceases. Oh, <clears throat> never mind. Fine, I'll get back to work. Mostly, my man. It's you. God help me. Can I ask you about some stuff? You're the writer. Ask away. Wow, that's a lot of shit. What can you tell me about voodoo? There's voodoo that goes on in this city, sure. I looked into it a bit at the beginning of this case. But the voodoo stuff found at the crime scenes is all fake. It doesn't have anything to do with the real stuff. I know. I asked some experts. It's intimidation tactics. That's all. What else can you tell me about voodoo? I told you, don't worry about that part of it. It's all fate. What do you know about the voodoo murders? Lots. Can you be more specific? Do you know anything about the killers? At least 20 people attend the killings. We know this from the variety of footprints found at the scenes. Footprints? Aren't those as good as fingerprints? Can be, but we'd have to have a suspect in custody first. And the suspect would have to match one of the few distinct prints we have. Most of the footprints are smudged, trodden over, unreadable. These guys are so casual in their expertise, it's maddening. Like they know we'll never find them. How many murders have there been so far? Seven murders have so far been linked to the voodoo murders case. The first murder occurred about eight weeks ago. The M.O. is the same in each murder. Lake Pontchartrain was the seventh. What kind of evidence have you found? No fingerprints. A few bare footprints. Found a few fibers, but not many. The weirdest one was leopard fur. Leopard fur. Describe the crime scenes. Well, there's the corpse itself, minus the heart. Around where the body was killed, we find marks and flour and blood. There are traces of wax from candles, red and black. Ordinary wax candles, so the lab reports. Also blood and feathers of chickens, and goat's blood, and plenty of the victim's own, of course. What's the coroner say? The victim's heart is always ripped out of the chest and missing. We haven't located a single one of them. Lovely. Any idea what they do with them? Don't even want to know. Also, the coroner says some of the victims had heart attacks before the incision. Literally scared to death. The knife wounds are consistent with a long, narrow, wavy-edged knife. Probably a ritualistic dagger. Any witnesses? Nope. There's never been a single witness. No one's even heard a disturbance. It's damned weird. Like they just don't want people to see. And so nobody sees nothing. Or, you know, people aren't going to rat off people who gather up and cut out people's fucking hearts. Okay, this is not rocket science here. Gee, they just cut some motherfucker's chest open and ripped his fucking still beating heart out. I should go rat on him to the police. That couldn't possibly end badly. Know anything about the victims? The victims are all out of towners. We still don't know why. Oh, nothing. Never mind. Sure, no problem. Okay, anything else? Do you know anything about Marie Laveau? Is she that red-headed chick that works at Freddy's? Um, no. Then I don't know her. What can you tell me about Narlings? You and me grew up here together. You tell me. It's a pretty nice place, even seeing the stuff I see, you know. The Carter's getting a bit too wild, though. Getting hard to control. Not quite what it was when you and me used to hang here, but... Hell, I've never known anything else. What can you tell me about Narlins? Ah, 
I'm too sentimental to say anything else about it. Do you know anything about snakes? The only thing I know about snakes is that I don't like them. What can you tell me about St. John's Eve? That's coming up, isn't it? We get some occasional weirdness in the quarter, but nothing much. Used to have a lot of strange things happen, though, or so I hear. What else can you tell me about St. John's Eve? I don't know much except what I already told you. Does the phrase Capri Saint Co mean anything to you? Hell no! Is that French? My mother spoke it, but I always had a hard enough time just speaking English. True enough. Tell me about yourself. For the book? Sure, why not? Okay. What do you want to know? How do you like working on the police force? Are you kidding? You know I love being a cop. In New Orleans, it's the best place in the world to be one. What are your plans for the future? Well, you know, I don't like to count my chickens before they're hatched, but I don't see why I can't be the chief of police of New Orleans someday. I already know the mayor, and my track record is one of the best in the department. I'm sure it's just a matter of moments, mostly. Yeah, yeah, you'll see. Got any hobbies? Yeah, making your life miserable. I'm serious. Don't you shoot or chew or something like that? No, I'm a freaking ballet dancer. Sheesh. Yeah, I was number one at the Louisiana State Fair Marksman Contest. I play trumpet, too. You know. Put your lips together and blow. How's your home life? Oh, real funny night. Why don't you just bring in some freaking salt? You know Annie left me. My home life is shit. Right. Sorry about that. Just tell me anything at all. Remember how we used to play monkey in the middle? <laughs> Man, we used to piss off our senior year teacher. What was her name? Uh, oh, Miss McKelly. You'd act like you were gonna toss her an eraser or something. And then you'd throw it to me over her head. And we used to do it at your grand's, too. Like with the remote when she wanted to watch her soaps. Yep. And it was a great way to pick up women in the library. <sighs> ah, those were the days. Just tell me anything at all. You know, my doctor told me I got a little family of ulcers starting. I wish this case would end so I could get some rest for a change. Just tell me anything at all. Oh, my back hurts. Just tell me anything at all. For the book, I wanted to be an astronaut when I was young, or a fireman. Fascinating. Okay, one more time and Just I'm tell me splitting. anything at all. I'm 6'2". You are not. Oh, come on. I'm close enough. Just write me up that way. Oh. Oh, nothing. Never mind. Sure, no problem. Okay, anything else? Do you know anything about the patterns around the bodies? Yeah, weird, huh? All seven victims had those marks around them. We've got all the marks on file, but we haven't figured out what, if anything, they mean. Can I see the other six patterns? Uh, sure. People like that kind of stuff, don't they? Might make the book seem more mysterious. Go talk to Officer Franks. Tell her I said you could see the file. Okay, well, I need to get him out of the office, from what I understand. And there is one way to do that. I'm gonna hit the road. Ciao, baby. Excuse me, officer? Yes? 
Can you get a file for me? What file would that be? The Voodoo Murders file. Detective Mosley said I could see it. Really? Well, if you said so. She's awfully credulous. There it is. You can look at it all you want, but don't leave this area with it, okay? And no photocopies either, I'm afraid. Of course. I understand completely. Gabriel opens and reads the police file. Don't leave the room with that file, please. Oh, well, hell, I'll give you the file back then. I'm done. Yeah, thanks. It's about out of time. Detective Mosley. Hard at work, I see. Yeah, yeah. What is it, you wanker? Dang air conditioning must be on the blink. Can I ask you about some stuff? You're the writer. Ask away. I got those photographs you left for me. Really? Great. What'd you think? Astonishingly lifelike. Yeah, that's what I thought. You got any more ideas for photos for the book? A cop author photo might be nice. You and me? Together? Why not? Of course you'll have to try to tone down your masculinity. Well, okay. I'll call the police photographer. Uh, Franks, come in here a minute, would you? And bring your camera. I hate to put my coat on. It's so damn hot in here. But a picture is a picture. What did you need, Detective Mosley? We need a picture, please. And make it a good one, eh, sweetheart? Sure, sweetheart. Say, Chintzy. Was there anything else, Knight? Oh, what the How hell? about one of me and Officer Franks? Gee, I don't know. Uh, Franks? Uh, um... Just kidding, Franks. You want to get me fired for <laughs> sexual harassment night? Well... Yeah, ha ha. Now is there anything else, or can I let this lady go back to her desk? Hold on a sec while I go check my hair. Good God, Knight. Make it fast. Ah, damn it. Go back in. I don't. I'm, a, I'm pretty much out of time, so I gotta wrap this up. Just Would fucking just walk in, in there. Here? Hurry up. What? Okay, ready. Thanks, hon. Let me know when you get them developed. Uh, the photos, that is. Yeah, sure. Anything else, Knight? Nope. That's about it. Great. Thanks, Franks. Hey, I made a rhyme. You're astonishing, mostly. Don't call me that in front of the lady, wise guy. Thank God I can take this thing off again. Damn, it's hot. Okay, anything else? 
How about getting me some coffee? Coffee? You want coffee? Should that surprise you? Nah, you've always been a caffeine addict. It's just that what we got here hardly qualifies. So I'm desperate. It's your stomach. I'll get you some when we're done talking. That long? All right, I'll go now. Don't touch anything while I'm gone. I think I'll just borrow this badge. Hey, hey, what are you doing with my coat? Nothing. Nothing? I thought I saw something crawling on it. Just drink this. Just Thanks. get an hour. Come Don't on, fucking hell. It. I have to get her back in here. So we're going to run long, but I'm going to get her in here and then... Uh, one more time, fix my hair, grab the file, copy it, and... Will you quit fucking around? Okay, anything else? Oh, fuck. Okay. I got those photographs you left for me. Oh, so fuck no, damn it. Let's... I... Rip. Franks, come back in here with that camera. <laughs> She's got to be getting I pissed off. I put my coat on. It's so damn hot in here. Okay, yeah, whatever. But Just hurry up. Picture's a picture. Now what, sir? This clown wants another picture. You don't mind, do you? Of course not. What else could I possibly have to do? Ready? Smile. Anything else, Knight? Hold on a sec while I go check my hair. Good God, Knight. Make it fast. That's the plan. I wish you could turn off the fucking transitions. Just wanna check this machine here. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and Wrap it up with Mosley real quick like and go outside and save. We're going to call it an episode there because there's still more to do in this day. So uh, I bet we're already over, you know, the time I normally allot to this. So Would you just get in here? Yes, just go in the fucking door. Hurry up, would you? Okay. Thanks, hon. Let me know. Yeah, sure. Anything else? Nope. That's about it. Good. Uh-huh. Thank God I can take this thing off again. Damn, it's hot. Okay. Anything else? Yeah, we're done. I'll let you get back to it. Later, Knight. Okay, my curiosity is killing me. I'm going to ask her something real. I'm going to see what she says, if anything. But other than that, we're out of here. Excuse me, officer? Yes? Are you sure I can't make a copy of this file? I'm real sure. Okay. Oh. 
Never mind. Fine. I'll get back to work. All right, guys, that's it. Sorry I ran a little bit long, but such is life. All right, well, next time, obviously, we'll be continuing this, and uh, we're going to be going to Jackson Square and doing some shit there, too. Uh, we're still not quite into the supernatural part of this, but we're kind of slowly but surely getting there. So with that, guys, I will see you next time, and hopefully we'll make some real progress then.